Hey, how's it going? Nat here. Let's see what's making news. Scientists have found what they believe could be the perfect place for humans to live on the moon. And with many countries racing to build lunar bases within the next couple of decades, it could become hot property. So Joe, tell us more. Welcome to Joe's Real Estate's latest listing. Number one lunar street, the moon. <laughs> I made that up. There's no addresses here. <laughs> Just a smidge over 384,000 k's from any CBD and uh, completely inaccessible by public transport, this property could be the pinnacle of off-grid living. <laughs> At least according to scientists from the University of Trento in Italy. Yep, using radar data from NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, scientists spotted this cave on a rocky plain called the Mare Tranquillitatis, or Sea of Tranquility. Not far from where the Apollo 11 astronauts first walked on the moon back in 1969. They reckon the cave is about 45 metres wide, 80 metres long and 150 metres below the surface. It's not very homely right now, but experts reckon it could be the perfect spot for a lunar base because it can shield astronauts from extreme temperatures, cosmic rays and radiation, and micrometeorites. They also say this research could help us explore more caves on planets like Mars and maybe even find evidence of life. And with countries like the US and China hoping to build human bases on the moon sometime in the next decade, caves like this one could be the hottest property in the galaxy. <laughs> Two days after being injured at a rally, Donald Trump has been confirmed as the Republican nominee for president. Mr. Trump also announced his potential vice president, 39-year-old Ohio Senator J.D. Vance, who was a US Marine and became famous after he released a best-selling book that also became a movie. The former president also had a win in court after a judge ruled that he can't be tried for his mishandling of classified documents. The annual Royal Swan Count is underway in England. Yes, it's a real thing. So, Sass, what's it all about? With their uniforms on and oars in hands, these swan uppers are off <coughs> to do the annual swan census, better known as swan upping. Yeah, each year these officials venture out onto the River Thames and count swans. Leading the way is this guy, David Barber, swan marker to His Majesty the King. What a title. All my life I've worked on the River Thames and I've always loved swans. And it's just one of those things and I wouldn't be doing this job if I didn't love a swan. So why is this a thing? Well, traditionally all unmarked swans belong to the king. Way back in the 12th century, swans were considered a delicacy that was served at banquets. So if the royals wanted to impress their guests at dinner, they had to know how many swans were out there. But don't worry, these days it's not about dinner. Today, swans are a protected species, so the swan uppers give each bird a full health check as they count them. And the event is about promoting species conservation. His Majesty, um, very, very keen on conservation, education and wildlife itself. Now it's time for some stories that are all about going the distance. <sighs> First up, let's go 250 million kilometres away from Earth, where NASA has beamed hip-hop into deep space for the first time. Yup, the lyrics to this song by American singer-songwriter Missy Elliott were transmitted by NASA's Deep Space Network all the way to planet Venus. Now to Witcham in the UK, where the 51st Pea Shooting World Championships have just taken place. Contestants rocked up, locked and loaded with their pea shooter of choice, some looking rather high-tech for the job at hand. Oh, I cheat every year. It's brilliant. No one notices. In the end, it was 51-year-old Rob here who took home the top prize. Done it again. <laughs> and finally, to Italy, where this prototype for a new prosthetic foot has been unveiled. It's what's called a soft robot, made of things that allow it to be more flexible to try and mimic the human foot. It's also waterproof, which lends itself to more outdoorsy-type situations, including uneven and slippery terrains. <laughs> Well, that's all from us today. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now. <laughs>